The only prayer I could imagine speaking at that point was an angry one. Like Martha and Mary, I wanted to shout out. I wanted to say, Lord, where were you? Lord, if you had been here, this kind of thing would not have happened. But like Ezekiel, I knew I had to prophesy. I had to prophesy to those bones. I had to shout into the wind some word of hope. But I didn't know what to say. Spirit of the living God fall afresh on me was all my heart was saying in that silence. And that's when I saw it. I saw the face of the risen Christ in the eyes of Eric for his bride. And in Emily's face set upon her groom, they were clinging to each other. God had given them to each other, and already they were one flesh. Anyone could see it, so I wanted to laugh. I heard in my heart those Easter words from 1 Corinthians 15. Where, O oh, death, is thy victory? Where, O oh, death, is now thy sting? Love is always stronger than death. I was looking into the rubble of ruined lives, what any sane human being living in this world would call a disaster. And I was called to proclaim the good news. Through the eyes of faith, I had to pray that the power of the Holy Spirit could help them to see the dawn of resurrection that I could see in the golden sunset on their faces. Well, I have no idea what I actually said during that homily because I had no time to write anything down. What I do know is that while I watched, the guests at that wedding came back to life before my eyes. Resurrection happens like that. They listened to the good news of God's love. They prayed with strong voices, like people who hadn't been to church in a very long time. They gave thanks for the glory of our brief days on earth. And we all cried a lot. And at the end of the service, when the pastor usually does the blessing for the bride and groom, I call them up to join me. And we all gathered around Emily and Eric to lay hands on them. And we prayed together for her healing. We prayed for God to bless and prosper their lives together. And somehow, at the end of that prayer, those skeletons got ready to sing and to dance. They were ready to laugh with me because they too had seen the truth. They had witnessed the power of God to restore life and hope. They had seen it in Emily and Eric's faces. Well, the last time I saw Emily, I, I want you to know I, I went to her house because she had promised me a free haircut before I moved here to be with you in Connecticut. She didn't want you to have to see all my split ends. <laughs> And I wanted to donate a foot of my braid to Locks of Love in her name. And you may not know this, but we've had her on our church prayer list now for a year, and it meant an awful lot to her mother, Kathy, especially, because she's a member of another United Church of Christ up in Vermont, where Emily was confirmed. Kathy and I kept in touch by regular emails over these last 18 months. I heard about the chemotherapy, the alternative treatments in Europe, several major surgeries. And finally, just last month, I heard Eric was finally getting her out of the rainy and cold Bay Area. He was taking her down to Southern California because it was time for her to enter hospice care there. And she wanted to die in the sunshine like that day she got married. So I got the email 
Thursday night after a personnel committee meeting that she had died. And it was exactly 19 months from her wedding day. Her mother wanted you all to know this because she so appreciated your prayers. Because it connected her to the spirit of God, which is so much larger than a single family or a single family's church. She also wanted to know that even though the cancer wasn't cured, through her illness, her mother's prayers had been answered. Emily and Eric both had found their faith again. They found fullness of life like most of us never know because each day that was given to them was so precious. They knew beyond the power of a doubt that something far greater than they were, something far greater than anyone could imagine, that power was holding them up when they were too weak to stand. You know, a day comes for all of us when we face a valley of dry bones in our own lives. A day comes when we're called to stare at the stone door of a tomb where someone we love lies in the darkness. The voice of God, though, the very breath of God is there with us to bring us new life. The voice of God, the very breath of God, is ready to blow into us and help us to stand. The voice of God, the very breath of God, can restore us to new life. Thanks be to God for this good news. Amen.